where we are right now, Bill. Mark, we're over the 105. This is the Century Freeway eastbound. We just crossed the Long Beach Boulevard off-ramp. Next stop coming up ahead is going to be the 710. So we have worked our way out of South L.A. Now we're in the Linwood area. Uh, 105 east at the 710. These are LAPD officers on the freeway. They're chasing up what appears to be a small Toyota, looks like a white Toyota Prius. It tells a person in that car possibly armed with a gun. Now, the chase began a little before 11 o'clock. LAPD officers tell us they were following this car. It turned into a chase on the 105 westbound. The driver got off the freeway somewhere near LAX around service streets in the Westchester area, and then for some reason jumped right back on to the 105, this time eastbound instead of westbound. We've worked our way from LAX through Hawthorne out of South LA, now into the Linwood area. These are still LA LAPD officers. At one point, they may turn this over to CHP officers. And CHP officers, they may already be on the freeway. Now, they're scooting along at such a fast clip right now. It took us a while to catch up with these guys. Chase has been going on since a little before 11 o'clock tonight, and uh, difficult to see right now from the helicopter. Those might be tinted windows, so not only difficult for us to see anything that's going on in that car, but it'll be difficult for L LAPD officers on the freeway to see what's happening in here as well. They've got the whole freeway wide open right now. I can look off the nose of the helicopter and out toward uh, Norwalk, where the 105 comes to an end over by the 605. Uh, looks to be wide open right now. They're scooting along. We're indicating in the helicopter right now about 70 miles per hour, so they're probably doing 70, maybe 75 miles per hour. Traffic is very light. I don't see any Caltrans projects up ahead. Don't see any congestion. So the driver really has a wide berth right now to do whatever they want. Of course, LAPD officers open the shop for you just a bit. Not only one, two, or three, but a whole row of police officers right on top of that driver's every move. And once again, they believe that driver may be armed with a gun. They have crossed the 710 now, eastbound on the 105. And once again, in about three miles, they'll come up on the 605, and that's where the Century Freeway ends. The suspect will have an opportunity to go northbound on the 605 up uh, towards Santa Fe Springs or southbound on the 605 down toward Hawaiian Gardens, Los Alamitos, uh, down toward Long Beach and Orange County as well. We'll see what happens here in the next couple of minutes. In the meantime, the chase continues. The only information we have about that driver is someone who may be armed with a gun. That's not confirmed yet, but uh, LAPD officers, that's what they're going on for now. The chase has been going on for about 15 uh, maybe 20 minutes, and as you can see, they're passing up everybody on the freeway. I'd suggest they're doing about 75, maybe 80 miles per hour right now. There may be a police helicopter in the area. I'm going to back off for just a moment here, guys, and try to talk with that police helicopter, try to find out some more information about that driver. In the meantime, we'll keep the picture hot <coughs> from Air 7 HD. And once again, this is the 105 eastbound. Now we're coming up close to the Lakewood Boulevard off-ramp, and back to you in the studio. Okay, Bill, thank you. Uh, as Bill mentioned, uh, this began just before 11 p.m. Uh, we believe this started near the 105 freeway, uh, eventually, uh, initially heading westbound uh, toward uh, LAX, and then the driver getting back eastbound, uh, going through the Hawthorne area into Linwood and now into the Paramount area. Light traffic this evening on the 105 freeway, and uh, so far no reports of any collisions with other vehicles. Uh, we're not sure if they might try to use a spike strip. Right now it's the LAPD in pursuit, and if this continues on the freeways, then we could see this uh, being handed over to the CHP. But right now, uh, Bill Thomas is reporting the LAPD is following uh, on the ground, and we believe from above. Yeah, and if this is a Prius, this raises an interesting uh, specter. It's going to have longer range than a lot of other vehicles might have, uh, and it's it's also got pretty decent speed, actually, uh, a Prius. So this does kind of raise some some issues that uh, one might not see if they weren't chasing a hybrid car. I, it's hard for me to tell based on what I can see, but where where you know it was described uh, by uh, people here that it's possibly a Prius, and so we're going to see if we can zoom in a little closer and find out if that is in fact what it is. Uh, and aside from that, yeah, there's no traffic ahead of them. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no stopped vehicles ahead of them. And so this is kind of a clear field for this uh, individual for as long, I guess, as they want to continue unless they uh, either make a mistake or the pursuing officers decide to step something up and try to, uh, to end this uh, in uh, some a more aggressive fashion on the freeway. Uh, Bill Thomas, I know you were checking in with the, uh, the airship that the LAPD has overhead. Uh, to try to get an update or get some more information, no see what you got. Uh, let's let's have you. Are you able to talk to us now? Not, okay, I'm not I believe sure he's still. Yeah, he's still on. He's still talking to them, trying to get some more information uh, as best he can. But you're seeing. A, a hey guys, wide uh, sorry, we haven't got the audio in the helicopter. Hopefully, you can hear us. I can't hear you, but just want to give you the update. Here we are on the 105 eastbound. We're coming up to the end of the freeway. This is where the 105 terminates and brings you on to the 605. Can't tell which way the driver's going to go just yet, but he will have to go north or south on the 605. We're on the connector ramp now from the 105 eastbound, and it looks like he's going to make the turn 
onto the 605 northbound, and that's going to take them up toward the Santa Ana Freeway, up toward Santa Fe Springs. If you're just now catching us right now, this is a pursuit that began a little before 11 o'clock. LAPD officers are on the freeway. In fact, uh, CHP officers may have joined in on the pursuit, but originally LAPD officers tell us they were following somebody. They say that person may be armed with a gun in that Toyota Prius. Uh, the chase was initially on the 105 westbound. They made their way out toward the LAX area. Somewhere near LAX, they tell us the driver jumped off of the freeway and driving around service streets in the Westchester area. And then the driver at one point got back onto the 105, but this time the 105 eastbound coming in from LAX. And then we tracked that pursuit on the 105 eastbound coming in from LAX through Hawthorne, uh, South LA, Linwood as well. And then they made the merge from the 105 eastbound. Now they are confirmed onto the 605 northbound. So we're coming up now almost to the Firestone off-ramp right by the Santa Ana Freeway, and that'll be in Santa Fe Springs. Now, one more chance for that suspect to do something different. They could continue northbound on the 605 through the Santa Ana Freeway and head up toward Pico Rivera, up toward the Rose Hills Complex, or they could pick up the Santa Ana Freeway here at any second. And there's the freeway merge. This is the 605 northbound coming up on Interstate 5. Not sure if we'll pick up the Santa Ana Freeway northbound, the Santa Ana Freeway southbound, or just continue on to the northbound 605. Time is on the side of police officers, either LAP PD officers on the freeway here. They might be CHP officers as well. They've got huge numbers of resources. If one person runs out of gas, there are additional units that can bring up the rear and keep that pursuit going. As you know, those to uh, Toyota Priuses, they're small four-engine uh, hybrid engines, hybrid cars, so the uh, duration is really incredible. These things I hear get 45, 50 miles per gallon. So with a full tank of gas, that could net you somewhere between 400 and 500 miles. So this is one of those chases that could go on for an incredible amount of time. Uh, right now, we are crossing the Santa Ana Freeway, and that's going to be on the number two lane. So it looks like they'll commit to the 605 northbound. We're looking at speeds here at about 70, 75 miles per hour, at times even a little bit quicker. This guy was going so fast on the Century Freeway a short time ago, took us a while in the helicopter, a jet helicopter, to catch up to this guy. And at times, we were indicating close to 95, close to 100 miles per hour. But we finally did catch up to the driver. And as you can see, the windows appear to be tinted. It's uh, very dark. The freeway is poorly illuminated, so I can't confirm that. But from our altitude at about 1,500 feet, looks like all the windows are tinted. So that's a conflict for police officers, CHP officers as well. They can't tell who else might be in that car. Uh, pit maneuver, I'm sure you've seen that in the past. Generally, they're done on surface streets and generally at much lower speeds, usually uh, under 30 miles per hour. And generally, when a driver makes a left or a right turn, uh, one of the cruisers will come up just behind that car, tap the rear quarter panel in an attempt to spin that car out of control and hopefully disable the vehicle. But on the freeway at this hour, with these speeds and with this traffic, which is relatively light right now, it's just too dangerous for everyone involved. You flip a car like that at these speeds, open up the shop for you just a bit. That driver could lose control, spin out, turn over. It could actually hop over the center divider and run into oncoming tra uh, traffic. So police officers at this point, they're not being offensive at all. They're being actually very defensive. They're giving that suspect a wide berth to at one point hopefully just pull over, surrender, give it up, and call it a night. But at this point, they're continuing 605 north. We have crossed Telegraph Road. And looks like right now that's going to be the Slauson Avenue off-ramp north on the 605. So it looks like we're getting closer and closer to Whittier. Then we'll work our way up toward Pico Rivera. And then the next freeway interchange up ahead, that'll be the Pomona Freeway, the 60. And that'll be up toward City of Industry and up into the San Gabriel Valley. So we're going a little bit tighter here. That light you see is going to be uh, police officers on the freeway. And there may be a CHP or LAPD uh, helicopter in the area. And oftentimes they're equipped with a night sun. They can illuminate that car a little bit better. And that accommodates uh, the patrol officers on the freeway as well so they can better see what's happening inside that car. You just don't know if there are other people in the car. There could be uh, someone with the suspect willingly. There could be being somebody uh, being held against their will in that vehicle as well. And that puts a lot of people in jeopardy. So officers are doing the right thing. They're keeping a wide distance, a wide berth. And hopefully that suspect at one point will just pull over and call it a night. You can see how quick this thing is moving on the freeway. This driver is passing everybody up. And this late at night, traffic is scooting along at a real good clip. Uh, there's no rush hour traffic here. Everyone's at 65, 70 miles per hour. And he's passing them up with no trouble at all. I uh, will open up the shop for you just one more time so you can see the sheer number of officers on the freeway right now. Uh, initially, these were LAPD officers. Open up just a little bit more. And you'll see more cruisers behind that guy. They're kind of widely staggered right now. So there's the first three. And there are additional cruisers as well. So right back to that car. We have police officers on the ground. I can't see if there's a police helicopter in the area. They might have one and sometimes even two police helicopters. And there they go, continue again, 605 North. And we're coming up now almost to the Whittier Boulevard off-ramp. And this will be in Whittier as we work our way up toward Pico Rivera, City of Industry as well. And back to you in the studio.
Okay, well, Bill, thank you. Uh, we'll continue to follow this picture, uh, this live picture from Air 7 HD as this pursuit continues now on the 605 freeway heading northbound through the Whittier area now. This began just before 11 o'clock tonight uh, when LAPD men inside the car in addition to the driver. It's very hard to see uh, late at night. It's dark with the windows. We're not sure if they're tinted, but we have not been able to ascertain if there's someone in the, pa you know, in the passenger seat or in the back seat. Uh, but uh, this continues now. At one point, uh, the speeds were pretty high, going up to almost 100 miles per hour, as Bill Thomas reported. Uh, but uh, for the most part, this driver has been staying uh, within the same lane. We haven't seen uh, real erratic moves uh, with this person's driving and since we've been over it here on Eyewitness News. Uh, but it did look like, it, oh, maybe it's not the blinker. The, 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 perhaps the hazards were yeah, on. Yeah, the hazards or the, or the left turn signal was on. Now it's off. Uh, and from what we can tell, Michelle, this is not a Prius. It's a hard thing to determine from a moving helicopter at night, a thousand feet overhead in the dark. Uh, so uh, may have been a misidentification earlier, but it appears from our, from what we can tell now, looking at our monitors, that this is not a Toyota Prius hybrid. Uh, it's some other type of vehicle that we have not yet been able to uh, determine. But uh, it does take that factor out of uh, out of play at least it's not a hybrid vehicle so that it won't have the kind of range of some 500 miles that that a prius might but uh still uh per proceeding apace here and not erratic which means that the police are going to probably maintain their pursuit uh, it's, he's not uh, endangering other people at this point uh beyond what the initial call was of course if this person actually has a gun but as far as his driving is concerned not doing erratic things as michelle pointed out not even really changing lanes very much as he mm -hmm. continues on the northbound uh, 605 through whittier now uh but the report is that he ha the he has a gun and uh, has uh, sparked the interest of the LAPD and uh, for that reason they are pursuing. Um, there is tip what typically happens when you get onto the freeway of course is the jurisdiction uh, is, is, is that of the highway patrol and uh, that handoff could take place. I'm not sure if it has yet looking down at that vehicle looks like it's still a, an, an LAPD unit uh, definitely a, a non-CHP unit, it appears, is directly behind him, but that handoff could take place at any time. You can imagine the CHP uh, getting their vehicles uh, in place, ready to right. take this over if it's called upon. Um, but at this point, uh, still now northbound on the 605 freeway, passing through Whittier. Bill Thomas, I hope you can hear us. Uh, let's, let's go to you and see if you can give us an update on what's happening. Absolutely. Back with you. 605 northbound. We have crossed uh, Peck Road. We're coming up on the Pomona Freeway now. This is the area referred to as City of Industry. So now we've made our way into the San Gabriel Valley. This is a pursuit with legs. This is a pursuit that began somewhere near the LAX area a little before 11 o'clock tonight. We've gone to LAX from LAX through South LA into Linwood, Norwalk, and now all the way up into City of Industry. It looks like he's sticking with the number two lane. This is the wide stretch of the 605. you got a carpool lane, four lanes additionally up ahead near Valley Boulevard as you work your way out of Industry toward Baltimore. Baldwin Park, the freeway does narrow just a bit. A lot of construction up there as well. But uh, for now, he appears to be confining himself to the number one lane, sometimes the number two lane. Uh, initial call was a Toyota Prius. Now he's pushing off into one of the right lanes, but as you mentioned, Mark, apparently not a Prius, but a smaller four-door sedan. Can't tell exactly what that is because of the late hour. The freeway is poorly illuminated. The windows are tinted and not a whole lot to go on with regard to what kind of car that is. But uh, LAPD officers uh, generally are out of their jurisdiction right now. This is no longer in the city of Los Angeles, but they initiate the pursuit so it looks like at this point I can't tell if they've turned it over to CHP officers but it looks like they're going to stick with it for a while longer at one point this could go to CHP officers and then off the freeway at one point this could go to LA County Sheriff's deputies who patrol this particular portion of the San Gabriel Valley City of Industry Baldwin Park and the surrounding areas now we have gone from the two inside lanes he's pushing over into one of the right lanes indicating now that at one point he may try and exit at the Valley Boulevard off ramp which is about the halfway point between City of Industry and Baldwin Park and he may continue through the Valley Boulevard up toward Interstate 10 into Baldwin Park proper, and then we'll have another option. It could go eastbound through the San Gabriel Valley and out toward Pomona and the Greater Inland Empire, or make that left turn, go west on the 10 uh, toward Boyle Heights, Alhambra, downtown LA. So now we are in the second lane from the right, and we're indicating about 65 miles per hour in the helicopter. 
and we're keeping steady pace with that suspect right now. If you missed it earlier, this began near LAX uh, a little before 11 o'clock. LAPD officers tell us, LAPD Metro Division officers tell us, they were uh, looking at somebody who they say may have a gun. So they're keeping a bit of a wide berth here. You see one cruiser right there, but behind that cruiser, I can see off the nose of the helicopter a number of additional cruisers. I can't see yet if there are any law enforcement helicopters in the area, but they are right on this guy. There's no way this guy could get away at the, this late hour and with so many police officers here in the area. At one point, the guy's going to have to run out of gas. Oftentimes, these things do terminate with a crash. People can't get hurt. People can't get killed as well. An advanced reminder, at one point, this may exit the freeway again. It may venture into your neighborhood somewhere here in the San Gabriel Valley. If or when that does happen, we'll certainly keep you informed, but we certainly caution you to stay indoors, keep the doors and windows locked. Oftentimes, people want to go outside and get a first-hand close-up view to all the action, and this is your best seat in the house right now. We'll bring you all the action, and these things get into surface streets. Oftentimes, they end in a crash. The suspect can get out of the car, make a run for it, and we have seen these suspects at times commandeer other people's homes, businesses as well. They turn into standoffs. Sometimes hostages are kept as well, so just stay indoors, stay out of harm's way, and we're continuing now. 605 northbound. He did cross Valley Boulevard, and by all indications, that's going to be the right collector lane. So he might try to pick up Interstate 10. Now he's exiting that collector lane, going back to the main line of the 605 northbound. So we're going to continue 605 north in the far right lane. Reasonable speeds. Uh, we're under 70 miles per hour at this point. And he's going to continue northbound out of Baldwin Park. Next stop up ahead is going to be Irwindale. Uh, the 605 in about four, maybe five miles, uh, it's going to come to an end. It terminates right at the Foothill Freeway. And that's in the Irwindale Dorde area. At one point, he may exit the 605 onto Server Streets at the north end where it ends. And he may opt for the east or westbound 210 in the north end of the San Gabriel Valley. Uh, at this point, once again, speeds appear to be reasonable. I would ballpark here, 70, maybe 75 miles per hour. Can't see if there's anyone else inside that car. And you may be wondering about that pit maneuver. If you missed it earlier, generally that pit maneuver where the officers will come up behind that vehicle and try to tap the rear quarter panel as the suspect makes a left or a right turn, spinning that car out of control. Far too dangerous at these speeds. Those things do work best at under 30 or 35 miles per hour and not on the freeway. I've seen it only happen once on the freeway during a pursuit where officers did initiate a pit maneuver, but it's a, the exception rather than the rule. It's generally done on surface streets. Uh, confining himself now to two of the right lanes. I believe we're coming up on the lower Azusa Road off-ramp. Up ahead off the nose of the helicopter, it's kind of dark, but I do see the Santa Fe Dam recreation area, and we are getting closer and closer now out of Baldwin Park up toward the Irwindale area. This is a very uh, sparsely populated area. It's going to get darker and darker as we continue with all the reservoirs and all the quarries up here up ahead. But uh, officers on the ground, they have uh, very high-powered uh, lights on their cruisers, and they're keeping that car very well illuminated. And you got to imagine the adrenaline must be pumping for this guy in that car. He can look in his rearview mirror and see all those flashing lights. If you ever got pulled over for a ticket for any kind of citation, you know how your stomach just drops when you see those red and blue lights flashing in your rearview mirror. And, of course, you can hear the sirens as well. All these folks on the freeway, they can see what's happening, too. Hopefully, they'll get out of the way and clear the freeway and give officers a chance to get right on top of that guy. Continuing now, 605 northbound. We're about two miles south of the 210. We have worked our way out of Baldwin Park, getting closer and closer to the Foothill Freeway. Now he's going to be in the number two lane. This is also a wider stretch of the 605. It did narrow back there by Baldwin Park, but as you can see here, you got a carpool and four lanes as well. Traffic is extremely light. The Caltrans projects, they usually don't kick in until after 11 p.m. Uh, right now, though, I don't see any Caltrans projects on the 605, and we've been tracking it from Norwalk all the way up to almost the 210 freeway. It's been a wide open stretch. Traffic is just screaming along. We are very lightly traveled, and with the lack of Caltrans projects, this guy really has the whole freeway all to himself, and everything is really up to him in terms of how long this chase goes on or if it comes to an end here in the next couple of minutes. So we'll continue to keep the helicopter overhead. We'll let you know what happens next in a couple of minutes. At one point, though, in about, I would ballpark three minutes, he'll have to commit to east or west 210 from the 605, and this will be where the 605 comes to an end. Mark and Michelle. All right. Well, if he does uh, end up going westbound, there is that chance that perhaps he could be heading back to a familiar territory. Uh, to where this all began um, near the uh, 105 freeway close to LAX. Um, that's where it all started a little bit before 11 o'clock tonight. And we've seen with many of these chases that that is, that is what happens is they go back to familiar territory, they get onto surface streets, and they look for out. Uh, of course, that's not always the case, but sometimes that is the case. But it's just too soon to tell as we continue to follow this uh, pursuit suspect down the 605 freeway heading north. And uh, the next uh, freeway option will be the 210 freeway. And uh, we will wait and see if he uh, goes 
to the east or to the west? Which way he goes. And in the meantime, we're uh, what I'm hearing on from Twitter, actually, uh, Christopher Ledesma, one of the followers on Twitter, sent us a picture of what appears to be a, a Nissan Sentra, which is what this appears to be. And uh, we will go with that for the time being as the identification of what sort of car this is. It looks a lot like uh, that picture that he sent me, so I want to thank him for, for that. Uh, in the meantime, what occurred to me is that, you know, if you drive these freeways at night, um, a lot of Caltrans projects actually take place on the freeways if they're going to do any construction or that sort of thing. They do it at night mm -hmm. to try to mitigate the effect on rush hour traffic. Rather than doing it during the daytime, they do it in, in, in the wee hours of the morning. Typically, they will start uh, around midnight in some of these locations. Uh, we haven't seen any of that so far along this route, but it's certainly not uncommon in areas where construction is being done that it would happen at this time of night. So it is possible that he could run to, into something like that at some point and the traffic could back up and that would change things as far as the pursuit uh, tactics would be involved, whether the ones that he employs or the ones that the uh, pursuing officers would be employing. We are again awaiting to see which way he's going to turn on the 210 freeway whether it's east or west. Uh, looks like a collector road there. Don't know what's, uh, what's ahead uh, directly here. But this is uh, a pursuit that has uh, gone on for quite some time now, almost half an hour, a little more than half an hour. Looks like he's d making a decision about which way to go. We think an east on the 210 now. I couldn't tell what the sign said there. Um, let's get more. Is, is Bill Thomas uh, available? Can Bill talk to us? Bill? Absolutely, guys. Right back with you. This is the 605 Northbound, where it does come to an end in Irwindale, and it looks like he's going to commit himself. I can see now he's going to make the right turn, so he'll be eastbound on the 210. 605 North to the 210 eastbound, and this is going to be in Irwindale. Next stop up ahead, the uh, big brewery, the Irwindale Avenue off-ramp as well, and he is committed to the 210 eastbound. Uh, we were talking to Mark just a short time ago about the Caltrans projects that generally start well after 11 p.m., and they generally wrap at 5 o'clock in the morning. I follow all the Caltrans projects every night to find out what's happening where. Uh, so far on the Foothill Freeway, those Caltrans projects are always scattered. You never know where they're going to pop up. But uh, so far, right now, looking off the nose of the helicopter out of Irwindale and all the way out toward Glendora and San Dimas. I can still see the freeway is very lightly traveled, as you can see on our tight shot right there. Don't see any Caltrans projects up ahead. No crashes, no stalls, nothing in lengths to hold this guy up or slow him down. As you mentioned, this is being referred to by one of, uh, the, one of the Twitter followers as a Nissan Sentra. The Sentra is a small four-cylinder engine. I don't believe that's a hybrid. Uh, they come with an average of 10, maybe a 12-gallon tank. I've heard tell of the Sentra's getting about 30, 35 miles per gallon. The faster you go, of course, you'll burn through your fuel a little bit quicker, but this won't have the duration of a full tank of gas that a hybrid might have, but still a small four-cylinder engine. Uh, the gas mileage is generally very good, so this could go on for quite some time. And as you mentioned, Mark, this has already been going on for well over a half an hour. This is the 210 eastbound Irwindale Avenue off-ramp at this point confined to the far right lane. We're indicating 70, sometimes 75 miles per hour on the helicopter, and we're keeping up a good clip with that guy. So he's right about the same as we are, 70 at sometimes 80 miles per hour. You can see freeway traffic there at 65 or 70. He's passing everybody up, uh, generally confining himself right now to the number three lane. Fortunately, the erratic driving, we don't see that this time around. Oftentimes in these pursuits, these guys will do anything to get away, and the faster they go, the more erratic the chase becomes. We have seen police officers at one point, they'll pull off the pursuit because it's just too dangerous for everybody, but police officers, as you can see, are still here. Unclear whether or not those are LAPD officers or CHP officers, but initially LAPD officers, they were the ones who initiated the pursuit. Metro officers, LAPD Metro officers, they were chasing this suspect who they believe may be armed with a gun. Began on the 105 westbound out by LAX. It was on surface streets in the Westchester area. And then for some reason that suspect got right back onto the 105, the eastbound Century Freeway. Worked his way out of LAX all the way into Norwalk, then onto the 605 northbound for a good 12, maybe 15 miles. And that's where the 605 came to an end at the Foothill Freeway. He committed himself to the 210 eastbound. We're coming up on Citrus College, Azusa Pacific University as well on the 210 eastbound. I can see the Azusa off-ramp, the Citrus off-ramp up ahead as well. And looks like he's staying right there with the middle of the freeway. You saw that wide shot. We'll go back in tight. But you can see there's a four, maybe five cruisers on top of the freeway. And it looks like a night sun. So there may be an LAPD officer or a CHP helicopter in the area as well using their night sun to keep that vehicle well illuminated. Uh, once again, the windows are tinted. So we can't tell what's happening inside that car if there's uh, anyone in the car outside to, uh, or in addition to the suspect. And that's going to complicate matters for law enforcement as well. They don't know anything of what's happening in that cockpit. And that's why they're keeping a wide distance, a uh, wide berth. They're not getting offensive. They're being very defensive. 
and they're letting that suspect do whatever he needs to do and hopefully come to the right decision to pull himself over. But at this point, scooting along at a very good clip on the 210 eastbound. We're about, I would say, four, maybe five miles away from the next major freeway intersection, and that's going to be the 57. That'll be in the Glendora, San Dimas area. At that point, you can only go south on the 57. That's where the 57 starts, but if you go south on the 57, that'll take them down toward Pomona, Diamond Bar, the Brea Canyon. Ultimately, if you decided to, go all the way down toward Orange County. He may continue with the eastbound 210, which goes all the way out into the Emblem Empire, and theoretically, he could take this pursuit all the way out toward Rancho Cucamonga on the Foothill Freeway. Once again, this is the 210 eastbound, and we're closing in on the 57 Freeway out toward Glendora. Back to you in the studio. Well, it's just been smooth sailing so far for this individual. Uh, traffic has been very light ever since this began, just before 11 o'clock. Uh, it began uh, near the LAX area on the 105 and continues now in the Azusa area on the 210 freeway. Uh, fortunately, there have been no reports of any collisions with other vehicles, no reports of anyone being injured as a result of this chase. Uh, it hasn't been a crazy chase by any means. It's, uh, the driver's been uh, pretty much staying in the same lane. Uh, had, has at times gone at a high speed, though, mm -hmm. uh, at times getting close to 100 miles an hour. But for the most part, reasonable speeds of going along the freeway. And he hasn't to had to drive erratically. That's probably because there's no traffic. He hasn't had to make a lot of real rapid or crazy lane changes because mm -hmm. it's been so empty on the freeway. So uh, the vehicle we're hearing is either a Nissan <laughs> Sentra or a Hyundai Accent. They look very similar from 1,000 feet up in the air in the dark. So we're going to leave it at that. We don't know exactly how what type of vehicle it is. It's a man with a gun. You can watch this streaming on ABC7.com. Jimmy Kimmel Live is next. We hope you have a great weekend.